Welcome everyone to the Church of Philadelphia. So today we're going to be studying who is wisdom, who is the bride of Christ, the scriptures are very clear on who the bride of Christ is and who wisdom is. And so we're going to study that today. So we're going to be breaking this down into a few um, different Bible studies. So if you do not know, first of all, I want to let you guys know that I'm going live on YouTube as well as on Facebook. So if you see me looking back and forth, it's because I'm recording on two different cameras. So um, the past couple of weeks have been a little up and down with my videos because with my uploads because I've been having a hard time since Facebook has updated their um, their platform I haven't been able to go on live I invested in a Chromebook which I kind of regret now and it doesn't have all the functions that I need so I'm waiting on my computer to come in the mail so that I can go on Facebook Live through my computer instead of having the, it set up this way. So I hope you guys can forgive me for this little setup that we have here today. But I am very thankful for all everybody coming here today. And so if you would like to open up your Bibles to Proverbs 8, okay, so that we can study who is wisdom. So I don't know if you guys remember, if you haven't seen the other previous studies before, um, please go through them because you might have no clue what I'm talking about and be utterly confused. So we study the two trees. We study the tree of knowledge versus the tree of life. And um, in Proverbs, it talks about these, this duality of these two women. So the first woman being someone who's seductive, someone who has a lot of, um, well, you guys can look through it, but like adultery, good and evil way, um, wisdom, the supreme guide of man, you know, different things like that, the value of wisdom. So this is extremely important to read Proverbs. So if you've never read Proverbs before, I strongly encourage you guys to start reading Proverbs because one of the things that made King Solomon so wise was the fact that he sought after wisdom. He didn't ask for riches. He didn't ask for, you know, even though he was rich, he didn't ask for that. He could have asked God for anything. What he sought after was wisdom because he knew that wisdom was more precious than silver and gold. Okay. So I'm going to wait a few, just a minute, just to see who all is going to join. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave the questions in the comment section and I'll try and answer them the best that I can. Um, if things are kind of confusing or if you you know need me to go back or whatever, just let me know. That's what I'm here for. So I'm like, I'll just tell you a brief part of my story real quick. You know, as a teenager, like most of us, I went off and did horrendous things and um, over time, the Lord came to me and brought me back to him. And I've been a Bible thumper since then. So that <laughs> I literally study the Bible so much of my own free time. And just this is what I enjoy doing. This is something that I do because I enjoy it. So um, I hope you guys enjoy studying the Bible as well. Um, there's so many riches inside of here. So many. And uh, it's when you start realizing the full revelation of God, that's what revelation is really about, is having the full understanding, the full revelation of God. It is so beautiful. And um, I used to ask all the time when I was a kid different questions, and I would always get the answer, oh, well, we won't know everything until <laughs> we, we die and go to heaven. And I used to think, well, that's stupid because... And we're dead, and it's something that we really need to know the answer to. Wouldn't it be too late? So I've always been the type to have questions, and I 
seek and seek and seek. Like I, I won't, I become almost not obsessed, but it bothers me not having the answer. So I continuously look until I find it. And like the Bible says, seek and you shall find. So that's what I do. And it also talks about how, you know, study to make yourselves approved. So it's important to study your Bibles. So I'm just going to go ahead and begin. So if you guys have your Bibles ready, it's um, Proverbs chapter 8, verse 1. Does not wisdom call and understanding raise her voice? On the top of the heights along the road, at the crossroads, she takes her stand. By the gates at the approaches of the city and the entranceways, she cries aloud. <clears throat> to you, O men, I call. My appeal is to the children of men. You simple ones, gain resource, you fools. Gain sense. Give heed for noble things I speak. Honesty opens my lips. Yes, the truth my mouth recounts, but the wickedness my lips abhor. Sincere are all the words of my mouth. No one of them is willy or crooked. All of them are plain to the man of intelligence. So I'm going to stop there for a second because that verse that we just read, sincere are all the words of my mouth. Not one of them is willy or crooked. Remember in, I'm not sure if you guys ever read this, but in Solomon, it talks about um, King Solomon saying that this woman, she has no crooked teeth. So you might think it means literally no crooked teeth, but what she's taught, what is talking about is this verse here. It's connecting you to this verse. His bride, his wife is the lady that Solomon, because Solomon is a type of Christ. And so when he said that she, her teeth are not crooked, he's trying to point you to who his bride is. Okay. So sincere are all the words of my mouth. So she has pure words coming out of her mouth. No one of them is really or crooked. All of them are plain to the man of intelligence and right to those who attain knowledge. Receive my instruction and prefer in preference to silver and knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than quarrels and no choice possessions can compare with her. I, wisdom, dwell with experience and judicial knowledge I attain. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride, arrogance, the evil way, and the perverse mouth I hate. Mine are counsel and advice. Mine is strength. I am understanding. She's saying she is understanding. By me, kings reign and lawgivers establish justice. By me, princes govern and nobles, all the rulers of the earth. Those who love me, I also love, and those who seek me, find me. With me are riches and honor, enduring wealth and prosperity. My fruit is better than gold, yes, than pure gold, and my revenue than choice silver. On the way of duty I walk, along the paths of justice, granting wealth to those who love me, and filling their treasures. The Lord begot me. He begot her. So she's not, some try to say that wisdom is just an attribute of God. He begot her. And in some of the passages, it says how the earth belongs to God. It belongs to the Lord. So she, it, but she helps to work. She comes to the earth and helps to do work on the earth. So she is separate from him. She is an actual being. The Lord begot me, the firstborn of his ways. So remember that Jesus Christ is called the first begotten, only begotten son. But there's a first begotten, only begotten daughter as well. There is always a woman inside of every man. 
okay, which is his Holy Spirit. And if you realize that it changed from Holy Spirit in the New Testament to the Holy Ghost, I mean, in the Old Testament was Holy Spirit, and in the New Testament, it changed to the Holy Ghost. And it's because the Holy Spirit is the mother, and the Holy Ghost is the daughter aspect that came from Yeshua. Remember when he was on the cross, he poured the side, poured out blood and water, and water is an aspect of the spirit. And then the spirit, he gave up his spirit. And he said, if I do not go, the spirit, you cannot receive the spirit. So he knew that's how he had what he had to do to bring forth the spirit. It's beautiful. So the Lord begot me, the firstborn of his ways. So he's the first begotten, only begotten son. So he's the only begotten son. And she's the first begotten, only begotten daughter. So they were both as one together. Remember, he, all of his works were done through the spirit. So while he was in flesh on this earth, those two were one. But when he died on the earth, that's when the cleave happened, the splitting that we we learned about in a previous um, session in Bible study. And so he, they separated into two so that you guys could now receive his spirit, okay, who is the tree of life. But he also is a tree of life. Because those two are one. The forerunner of his prodigies of long ago. So it says how wisdom was in the beginning. Okay. Wisdom was from the beginning. She was one of his first works. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. This is wisdom speaking. I was brought forth. When there were no fountains or springs of water, before the mountains were settled into place, before the hills, I was brought forth. While as yet the earth and the fields were not made, nor the first clouds of the world. I guess that means clouds. It's the way it was written. When he established the heavens, I was there. When he marked out the vault over the face of the deep. When he made firm the skies above. When he fixed fast the foundations of the earth. When he set for the sea its time so that the waters should not transgress his command. Then was I beside him as his craftsman. So she was helping him during the creation. I was, I was beside him as his craftsman, and I was his delight day by day, playing before him all the while, playing on the surface of his earth, and I found delight in the sons of men. So now, O oh children, listen to me. Instruction and wisdom do not reject. Happy the man who obeys me, and happy are those who keep my ways because through wisdom through wisdom we get to have the knowledge and understanding of God happy the man watching daily at my gates waiting at my doorposts for he who finds me finds life and wins favor from the Lord remember he said John said if you knew the Lord, if you knew the Holy Spirit, you would have not persecuted the Lord. And remember that when they were accusing Jesus of all of his miracles being done through the devil, casting out devils, he said, how can the devil cast out devils? It was only through the Holy Spirit that you can do that. So he said that that is the one unforgiving sin is blaspheme of the Holy Spirit. Very protective of each other, you guys. The family is very protective of one another. But he who misses me 
harms himself, all who love me love death. So remember the tree of life, okay? They could eat from all the trees in the garden, but the tree of knowledge is the one they should not eat from. But what tree did they eat from? They ate from the tree of knowledge. And so the tree of knowledge represents this other woman that you can read throughout Proverbs. In the beginning of Proverbs, it talks about her. The path of the wicked, greed and violence. This is uh, Proverbs 1, 8 through 33. Throughout Proverbs, it talks about a, a wicked woman and in an, a, a holy woman. Okay, there's a wicked man and a holy man. And so the tree of knowledge represents the wicked man and the wicked woman, okay, who we call Satan and Lucifer. But the tree of life is Jesus Christ and his bride, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, okay? So the Holy Spirit is the mother, the father, and then you have the daughter and the son, okay? So give me one second, you guys. I'm sorry, I'll be right back. Okay, sorry about that. All right. So, the tree of life, she is the tree of life, and so is Yeshua. So is Jesus. So, the one tree will bring you life. But if you reject the tree of life, remember they could eat from that tree as much as they wanted. But if they reject the tree of life, they choose death. Remember, the punishment for choosing the tree of knowledge is death. So through rejecting the tree that they could have ate from as much as they wanted to, they chose death, Adam and Eve. <clears throat> Wisdom has built her house. She has set up her seven columns. She has dressed her meat, mixed her wine. So meat is a word for, um, for nourishment, which is the words of God, right? And mixed her wine. Yes, she has spread her table. She has set out her maidens. She calls. So who else do we know through scriptures who sent out her maidens? In Solomon. Okay. Solomon, the woman in Solomon, she sent out her maidens. So there's the second one that we've received of the connection between her and this woman in Solomon. And throughout time, we're going to see the connection of the woman in Solomon to the woman in Revelation who is the New Jerusalem. And we're going to see why they call her the New Jerusalem. Because, you know, if she's so wonderful and great, why did she have to become new? So she has sent out her maidens. She calls from the heights out over the city that whoever is simple turn and hear to him who lacks understanding. I say, come eat my food and drink of the wine I have mixed. Forsake foolishness that you may live. Advance in the way of understanding. For by me your days will be multiplied and the years of your life increased. He who corrects an arrogant man earns insult. And he who reproves a wicked man incurs opprobrium. Reprove not an arrogant man, lest he hate you. Reprove a wise man and he will love you. So you will know them by their fruit. 
So if you're rebuking someone and their reaction is to hate you for it, then you know who they are, don't you? Instruct a wise man and he will become still wiser. Teach a just man and he advances in learning. The beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. If you are wise, it is is it is to your own advantage. And if you are arrogant, you alone shall bear it. So it's only hurting yourself for being arrogant. It doesn't hurt anybody else. The woman folly is fickle. She is inane and knows nothing. She sits at the door of her house upon a seat on the city heights calling to passerbys as they go on their straight way. Let whoever is simple turn in here, or who lacks understanding, for to him I say, stolen water is sweet, and bread gotten secretly is pleasing. Little he knows that the, sh the shades are there, that in the depths of the neither world are her guests. So it brings you death. The neither worlds, the word hell, as we learned previously, means death. And there's two deaths. There's one that everyone has to taste. So when someone says, go to, you know, hell, I say to them, we all go to hell because we all have to die. But it's the second one that you don't want. And that's the eternal one. That's the death of the soul. And so... This is what she's referring to. The neither world are her gates. So it brings them to hell, to their destruction. Remember, Jesus said that his, his bride is but one. Okay? She is but one. And so here when they said the woman who is fully is fickle, so this is talking about the woman, the original woman, the woman of Babylon, the woman who fell, okay, and her children who follow the same characteristics and traits. So give me one second. I'm going to grab this paper real quick. We're going to... Go to Galatians 4.26 real quick. So if you guys have your Bibles, I'll give you guys a second to go ahead and, and get that pulled up. Do, do, do. It's like I used to be able to just open my Bible right up to things. And now because of the Internet, it takes me a few minutes to get situated in the Bible that I have, I put these, I put these little markers on, which you think would help me. Um, it doesn't, it gets in the way. Don't get them. <laughs> it's easier just to use your finger and just to go through it, but it's in the way. So it's hard for me to, to find stuff now because it makes the pages stick together too. I'm used to just doing everything by typing it in to Google as well. So go ahead and pull that up, you guys. Like I said, in a couple weeks, I should have my whole setup with my new computer and everything else. And uh, yeah, it'll make things a lot easier. Let me just go up here and type it in. I didn't want to leave the page, but... You know me, there's always something going on. So Galatians 4.26. All right. So this is the uh, King James Version. But the Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. So here we're seeing that 
there definitely is a mother that we have. It says it right here. I mean, it says it throughout the whole scriptures. But we just need to start to understand that it's true. That they're not lying to us. They're not being deceitful. The only ones who are deceiving us are ourselves. Let's look at Jeremiah chapter 1. Mm -hmm. doo, doo, doo. If you guys have any questions, feel free to ask them. The words of Jeremiah, the son, let's see. Let's go down to Well, we're going to skip that one real quick. But we're going to read into Wisdom of Solomon real quick. We'll get into this one later. Wisdom of Solomon. And we're going to go down to Solomon. So really having an understanding for what all of this is saying about this woman and really connecting her to the bride of Christ, we have to really study to make ourselves approved. And we need to um, to take all of this in. So go to Songs of Solomon. Let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth. More delightful is your love than wine. Your name spoken is a spreading perfume. That is why the maidens love you. Draw me. We will follow you eagerly. Bring me, O king, to your chambers. With you we rejoice and exalt. We exalt your love. It is beyond wine. How rightly you are loved. So this is the woman speaking all the way up until the part where it says, "We, with you we rejoice and exalt. That's the angel speaking. Do not stare at me because I am swervy, because the sun has burned me. My brothers have been angry with me. They charged me <clears throat> with the care of the vineyards. My own vineyards I have not cared for. Tell me, you whom I sold, my heart loves. Where you pastor your flock, where you give them rest at midday. Lest I be found wandering after the flocks of your companions. If you do not know, O most beautiful among women, this is the king speaking to, to her. Follow the tracks of the flock and pastor the young ones near the shepherds' camps. To the streets of Pharaoh's chariots would I liken you, my beloved, your cheeks lovely in pendants, your neck in jewels. We will make pendants of gold for you and silver ornaments. So that's the angels there speaking. For the king banquet, and I have a video up of this Song of Solomon with these verses in it. And so I have the pictures that align with the scriptures so that you know who is speaking when. For the king's banquet, my nard gives forth its fragrance. My lover is for me a chachet of myrrh to rest in my bosom, my bosom, but whatever. My lover is for me, and this is quite, you know, sensual this part of the scriptures but this is the love between Jesus and his bride and like it says the sons will marry unto the bride okay and so and the virgin companions being the same women that we're going to see in the scriptures where she's asking them to help her find her king okay my lover is for me a cluster of henna 
from the vineyards of Engedi. Oh, you are beautiful, my beloved. Oh, you are beautiful. Your eyes are doves. Oh, you are beautiful, beautiful, my lover. Yes, you are lovely. Our couch, too, is verdant. The beams of our house are cater. Our rafters, cypresses. I am a flower of Sharon, a lily of the valley. As a lily among thorns, so is my beloved among women. As an apple tree among the trees of the woods, so is my lover among men. I delight to rest in his house, and his fruit is sweet to my mouth. He brings me into his banquet hall, and his emblem over me is love. Strengthen me with raisin cakes. I'm sorry it's getting dark in here now. I have no other lights to put in here. So YouTube, I think yours is pretty clear, but I mean Facebook, yours is pretty clear, but YouTube... I apologize for the poor quality today. Like I said, we're getting this fixed. Strengthen me with the raisin cakes, freshen me with apples, for I am faint in love. His left hand is under my head, and my right and his right arm embraces me. Adore you, daughters of Jerusalem. So she's speaking to the daughters of Jerusalem. So this isn't the daughter of Jerusalem. I mean, this isn't multiple women or men or no, it's one woman. By the gazelles and hens of the field, do not arouse, do not stir up love before its own time. Hark, my lover. Here he comes, springing across the mountains, leaping across the hills. My lover is like a gazelle or a young stag. Here he stands behind our wall, gazing through the windows, peering through the lattices. My lover speaks, he says to me, arise, my beloved, my beautiful one, and come. For see, the winter is past, the rains are over and gone, the flowers appear on the earth. So this is right after springtime. So winter passes, the rain stops, so what happens in spring? It rains, so now it's summer. The flowers appear on the earth, the time of pruning the vines has come, and the song of the dove is heard in our land. The fig tree puts forth its figs, and the vines in bloom, Give forth fragrance. Arise, my beloved, my beautiful one, and come. O oh, my dove, in the clefts of the rocks, in the secret re recesses of the cliff, let me see you. Let me hear your voice, for your voice is sweet, and you are lovely. Catch us the foxes, the little foxes that damage the vineyards, for our vineyards are in bloom. My lover belongs to me and I to him. He browses among the lilies until the day breeze cool and the shadows lengthen roam my lover like a gazelle or a young stag upon the mountains of Bether. chapter three on my bed at night i saw him whom my heart loves i saw him but i did not find him i will rise then and go about the city in the streets and crossing i will seek so remember we just read about how wisdom and wisdom, she's in the streets and she's crying, she's calling out. So this is showing you, it's pointing you to each other, you know, the connection between the two. And then we'll see the connection between her and the bride of Christ. Okay. And um, for those who believe that they are the bride of Christ. Okay. This doesn't mean that because you, there's only one woman who is the bride of Christ, that that is a bad thing for the rest of everybody else. You guys are 144,000 then. And so that is an extremely good title to have. There's been so many people before us who have wanted to take on that position. How many times throughout history did they say, during my generation, the Lord will come, right? And it never happened for them because a particular event and a particular people on this earth were meant to be here. Okay. Now, interesting enough to note, let me get a calculator up. I will tell you how many people from each tribe. So there's 
uh, let me get my calculator up. So 140,000 is the number that was given to us. All right, I'm waiting for the calculator. So four, four, one, two, three, divided by 12, the 12 tribes. So there's going to be 12,000 in the 12 of each of the 12, you know, 12,000 people for each of the 12 tribes. That's what that means. Isn't that crazy? 12,000 for the 12 tribes. So 12,000 people for each tribe. Remember in uh, the Old Testament, God says that he is going to let, there's um, a, like we see even in Revelation that there's a certain apostle who guards each gate, each of the 12 great gates in Jerusalem, right? And he said that they are going to judge their own tribes. So they're going to judge and they're going to pick from their tribes. Okay. Crazy, right? But this is how God is. He's so awesome that he wants us to work alongside with him. He gives us extraordinary privileges when, when he anoints us. So I will rise then and go about the city in the streets and crossing, I will seek him who my heart loves. I saw him, but did not find him. The watchmen came upon me as they made the rounds of the city. Have you seen him who my heart loves? I had hardly left them when I found him whom my heart loves. I took hold of him and would not let him go till I should break him, bring him to my home, the home of my mother. So to the room of my parent. So she is a single parent. She, her mother is a single parent. There's no mention of a father here. Okay, because her father is God the Father. I adjure you, daughters of Jerusalem, by the gazelles and hens of the field. Do not arouse, do not stir up love before its own time. What is this coming up from the desert? like a column of smoke laden with myrrh, with frankincense, and with perfume of every exotic dust. Uh, it is the litter of Solomon. Sixty valiant men surround him, of the valiant men of Israel. So this, what is this telling you right here, you guys? Think of Revelation. Let's read this one more time. So she's looking for him. She can't find him. Okay, because remember, he went off for war, to war. Okay, what is this coming up from the desert like a column of smoke laden with myrrh, with frankincense, and with the perfume of every exotic dust? Ah, it is the litter of Solomon, 60 valiant men surround him, and a valiant men of Israel. It's the coming of the Lord, you guys. So here she's again connecting you from the this woman wisdom is connected to this woman in um, songs. And then here again, it's connecting you to Revelation, the woman in Revelation. All of them expert with the sword, skill in battle. Each with his sword at his side against danger in the watches of the night. King Solomon made himself a carriage of wood from Lebanon. He made its columns of silver, its roof of gold, its seat of purple cloth, its framework in, in, inlaid in, with ivory. Daughters of Jerusalem come forth and look upon King Solomon in the crowd with which his mother has crowned him. That almost makes me want to cry, you guys. The Holy Spirit. I'm like, I'm actually tearing up. I'm sorry. Get you, get it together. That's so beautiful. In the, in the crown with which his mother had crowned him, on the day of his marriage, on the day of the joy of his heart. So again, it's telling you. Whew, sorry. 
it's connecting you to revelation and the marriage supper of the lamb. Oh, you are beautiful, my beloved. Oh, you are beautiful. Your eyes are doves behind your veil. Your hair is like a flock of goats streaming down the mountains. Sorry, it's emotional because I'm so connected to the Holy Spirit. And so like whenever I think of her, my heart just melts. Your teeth are like the flocks of who is to be shown, which come up from the washing. All of them big with twins, none of them thin and barren. Your lips are like a scarlet strand. Your mouth is lovely. Your cheek is like a half pomegranate behind your veil. Your neck is like the like David's tower, girt with battlements. A thousand bucklers hang upon it. All the shields of valiant men. Your breasts are like twin fawns, the young of a gazelle, the brows among the lilies. Until the day breathes cool and the shadows lengthen, I will go to the mountain of myrrh, to the hill of incense. You are all beautiful, my beloved, and there is no blemish in you. Come from Lebanon, my bride. Come from Lebanon. Come. Descend from the top of Amania, from the top of Sinir and Harmon, from the haunts of lions, from the leopard's mountains. You have ravished my heart, my sister, my bride. So he's telling you who she is again. He's giving you different clues as to her characteristics. And he also calls her my sister, my bride, because those two are one. So she is the bride. How much more delightful is your love than wine? And the fragrance of your ointments than all spices. Your lips drip with honey, my bride. Sweet meats and milk are under your tongue. And the fragrance of your garments is the fragrance of Lebanon. So let me see how much more I want to. Well, we'll finish it up. It's almost done, you guys. And then we'll have a part two on Friday, um, and we'll continue the study of this. You are an enclosed garden, my sister, my bride. An enclosed garden, a fountain sealed. You are a park that puts forth pomegranates with all choice fruits. Nardin saffron, pomegranates, and cinnamon. With all kinds of incense. I've been wanting to do this for a while, this video, but I haven't because look at me, I'm a mess. Myrrh with an olive and with the finest spices, you are a garden fountain, a well of water flowing fresh from Lebanon. Arise north wind, come south wind, blow upon my garden that its perfumes may spread abroad. Let my, my lover come to his garden and eat his choice fruits. I have come to my garden, my sister, my bride. I gather my myrrh and my spices. I eat my honey and my sweet meats. I drink my wine and my milk. Eat, friends, drink. Drink freely of love. So now it's the time for love. So do not wake in love until it's time. Now it's time. He's announcing it. I was sleeping, but my heart kept vigil. vigil. I heard my lover knocking. Open to me, my sister, my beloved, my dove, my perfect one. For my head is wet with dew, my locks with the moisture of the night. I have taken off my robe. I am then to put it on. I have bathed my feet. Am I then to soil them? My lover put his hand through the opening. My heart trembled within me, and I grew faint when he spoke. I rose to open my to my lover, but his hands dripping myrrh, dripping myrrh with the fingers dripping 
choice myrrh upon the fitting of the locks. So the choice myrrh. So we got to study to figure out what the choice myrrh means. Okay. It means the choice one. I opened to my lover, but my lover had departed, gone. I saw him, but I did not find him. I called to him, but did not, but he did not answer me. The watchmen came upon me as they made the rounds of the city. They struck me and wounded me and took my mantle from me, the guardians of the walls. I adjure you, daughters of Jerusalem, if you find my lover, what shall you tell him? That I am faint with love. So remember the spirit and the bride say, come, right? So this is the, depicting the calling when she's saying to the daughters of Jerusalem to call, okay, to go search for him, to go find him. This is the calling. How does your lover differ from any other, O oh, most beautiful among women? So this, this part here kind of reminds me of Cinderella, the Cinderella story, because it's like, you know, once they realize how wonderful he is, they're all like, oh, let's go find him. Like, oh, we're going to go find this guy. He sounds wonderful. He's going to be mine. Right. But it says that I forget. I can look it up, but it says no one shall lack your mate. Does he? Does your lover differ from any other that you adjure us so? My lover is radiant and ruddy. He stands out among thousands. His head is pure gold. His locks are palm fronds, black as the raven. His eyes are like doves besides running waters. His teeth would be, would seem bathed in milk. So they're pure white and are set like jewels. So the words that come, his milk, okay, his words, okay, are good. His cheeks are like beds of spice, um, aromatic herbs. His lips are red blossoms. They drip choice myrrh. His arms are rods of gold adorned with crystallites. His body is a work of ivory covered with sapphires. His legs are columns of marble resting on golden bases. <clears throat> His statue is like trees of Lebanon, imposing as the cedar as the cedars. His mouth is sweetness itself. He is all delight. Such is my lover and such my friend, O daughters of Jerusalem. So she's telling and explaining why he is so wonderful. <laughs> Where has your lover gone, O most beautiful among women? Where has your lover gone that we may seek him with you? My lover has come down to his garden, to the beds of spice, to browse in the garden, and to gather lilies. My lover belongs to me and I to him. He browses among the lilies. You are as beautiful as Tarza, my beloved, as lovely as Jerusalem, as awe-inspiring as banner troops. Turn your eyes from me. For they torment me. Your hair is a flock of goats streaming down from the lake. Your teeth are like the flock of ooze which come up from the washing. <clears throat> All of them bring with big with twins. None of them thin and barren. Your cheek is like a half pomegranate behind your veil. They are, there are 60 queens, 80 concubines, and maidens without number. One alone is my dove my perfect one, her mother's chosen, the dear one of her parent. The daughters saw her and declared her fortunate, the queens and concubines, and they sang her praises. Who is this that comes forth like the dawn, as beautiful as the moon, as resplendent as the sun, as awe-inspiring as banner troops? So now the meeting, love's meeting is how it's titled. I came down to the nut garden to look at the fresh growth of the valley, to see if the vines are in bloom, if the pomegranates have blossomed. So what is this talking about? This is talking about how, remember he said that 
um, do not, they were asking if they should pull out the, the wheat, the weeds from the wheat. And he said to let them both grow to the end. Right. So this here is talking about, um, I came down to the nut garden to look at the fresh growth of the valley to see if the vines were in bloom, if the pomegranates had blossomed. So he's trying to see if it's ready. Before I knew it, my heart had made me the blessed one of his, of my kinswoman. Turn, turn, O Shulamite, turn, turn, that we may look at you. Why would you look at a Shulamite as at the dance of the two companions, of the two companies? How beautiful are you, your feet and sandals, O princess, prince's daughter. Your rounded thighs are like jewels, the handiwork of an artist. Your navel is round bold. They should never lack for mixed wine. Your body is a heap of wheat encircled with lilies. Your breasts are like twin fawns, the young of a gazelle. Your neck is like the tower of ivory. Your eyes are like the pools in Heshbon. By the gate of Beth Rabin, your nose is like the tower of Lebanon that looks toward Damascus. Your head rises like caramel. Your hair is like draperies of purple. A king is held captive in its tresses. How beautiful you are, how pleasing, my love, my, my delight. Your very figure is like a palm tree. Your breasts are like clusters. I said, I will climb the palm tree. I will take hold of its branches. Now let your breast be like clusters of the vine and let your fragrance of your breath like apples and your mouth like an excellent wine that flows smoothly from my lover, spreading over the lips and the teeth. I belong to my lover and for me he yearns. Come my lover, let us go forth to the field, fields and spend the night among the villages. Let us go early to the vineyards and see if the vines are in bloom. If the buds are opened, if the pomegranates have blossomed, there will I give you my love. The mandrakes give forth fragrance, and at our doors are all the choice fruits, both fresh and mellowed fruits, my lover, I have kept in store for you. Oh, that you were my brother, nursed at my mother's breast. If I met you outdoor, out of doors, I would kiss you, and none would taunt me. I would lead you, bring you into the home of my mother. There you would teach me to give you spiced wine to drink and pomegranate juice. He lift, his left hand is under my head and his right arm embraces me. I adore you, daughters of Jerusalem, by the gazelles and hens of the field. Do not arouse, do not stir up love before its own time. The homecoming. Okay. Who is this coming up from the desert, leaning upon her lover? Under the apple tree, I awakened you. It was there that your mother conceived you. It was there that your parent conceived you. So under the apple tree. <laughs> oh, wow. So think of an Adam and Eve. You know, set me as a seal on your heart, as a seal in your arm. For stern as death is love, relentless as the neither world is devotion. Its flames are a blazing fire. Deep waters cannot quench love, <clears throat> nor floods sweep it away. Where one to offer all he owns to purchase love, he would be roundly mocked. Our sister is little and she has no breast yet. What shall we do for our sister when her courtship begins? If she is a wall, we will build upon it a silver parapet. If she is a door, we will reinforce it with a cedar plank. So here it's talking about building a wall for their sister? If she is a wall, if she is a door? So here it's telling you she's 
Jerusalem is the city. I am a wall. <laughs> and my breasts are like towers. And now in his eyes, I have become one to be welcomed. The bride and her dowry. Solomon had a vineyard at Baal <clears throat> Haman. We're finishing up, you guys. He gave over the vineyard to caretakers. For its fruit, one would have to pay a thousand silver pieces. My vineyard is at my own disposal. The thousand pieces are for you, O Solomon, and two hundred for the caretakers of the of its fruit. O garden dweller, my friends are listening for your voice. Let them hear it. Be swift, my lover, like a gazelle or a young stag on the mountains of spices. So I hope you guys understand and start to see some of the connections. Just thinking of the scriptures that you know of from Revelation. This is connecting us specifically from wisdom to this woman in songs and from the woman in songs to the woman in Revelation, the bride of Christ. So I hope you guys enjoy today's Bible study. Please join me. So we should have um, Bible study every Wednesdays and Fridays. Um, in in Ashallah, if God wills. Um, like I said, I will be getting new equipment. I'm waiting for it in the mail. It's still quarantine time, so mail delivery is a little off. So I would say in a couple weeks. So just bear with me. If you guys enjoyed this video, please like and share the video. Please subscribe below, down below. Leave comments, you guys. I would love to talk to each and every one of you. That's part of the reason why I, I go live all the time is so that we can interact with one another. And I appreciate you, and I thank you guys for watching. So join me this Friday. It's always at 7.30. If, um, if I'm going to be late or if there's any delays or anything, I'll usually post it on Facebook. So YouTube, my Facebook is the Church of Philadelphia Bible Study. And as far as Facebook, my YouTube channel is the Church of Philadelphia. So thank you guys for watching. And please join me this Friday. Bye, you guys.